Handbrake is a fantastic open source video transcoder. It can help you transcode or convert your video files into different formats. It has a very nice UI that's easy to use and helps you transcode videos very easily. It supports profiles that are optimized for your target device, so you're not left guessing what the settings are to transcode your videos. And because it's open source and cross-compiled, you can run it on Windows or Linux. And while you probably knew everything I just talked about, did you also know you could run it on Docker and Kubernetes? Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're going to talk about containerizing Handbrake to run in Docker and Kubernetes. And real quick, before we get started, if you have a question about anything we talk about in this video today, check out my live stream. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you have a question about anything we talk about today, hop in and say hello. And another thing, real quick, thanks ahead of time for the likes and comments because it lets me know if I'm on track. And if this is your first time seeing my face or my videos, or if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And so, let's get into it. So, you're probably familiar with Handbrake. It's a really robust way to transcode videos. And if you do anything with video, you've probably used it before. You may have transcoded some video for a specific device. You might have used it to make backup copies of your movies. Or you might have used it to archive some of your videos into better, smaller formats. And I've used it for almost all of those things. But I've always run it on my workstation. But lately, I've needed to batch transcode a lot of videos. And I started to search for server versions of Handbrake. And that's when I stumbled on the Docker version of Handbrake. And you might be thinking, well, if it's Docker, you might not have a UI. But that's where I was a little bit surprised. This Docker container comes with a UI that you can access through a web page. And they've done a really great job with it. It's a fully functional version of Handbrake that runs in a container that you access through a web page. And on top of all of that, it supports everything that Handbrake supports on a desktop version. And we can also watch folders and batch convert videos. So that's what we're going to set up today. So in the next couple of minutes, we're going to set up Handbrake inside of a Docker container. We'll first go over plain old Docker and how to get it running that way. And then we'll switch over to something called Rancher, which actually runs Kubernetes. And if you're not familiar with Rancher or Kubernetes, I've got a complete tutorial on how to set that up. It'll walk you through setting up Rancher, Docker, and Kubernetes and have you going in just a couple of minutes. But if you want to do this in plain old Docker, we're going to cover that too. So let's get started. The first thing we'll want to do is go out to github.com. We're going to look for a repo called jlessage slash docker handbrake. In there, we'll see the docker image for handbrake. Now this docker image has fantastic documentation and tons of features it supports. So hats off to this repo for, well, I got my hat on, but so hats off to this repo for having great documentation. But anyways, if we're going to do it in Docker, we'll scroll down to the quick start. We can see here the docker run command. And this docker run command is pretty straightforward, but here's how it works. First, we're going to run docker as a daemon. Next, we're going to name this container handbrake. Then we'll give it a dash p or publish. I like to think of it as ports, but we're going to publish and expose port 5800 on the inside of the container and the outside of the container. And then next up, we're going to map four volumes. And these four volumes will map to different folders on our server. And so this first volume here is mapping to our config. And we're going to give it read-write access. So on the left side, we're going to map it to a path on the server. And on the right side, we're going to map it to the inside of the container, which is config. And this will have read-write access. And that will store the configuration for Handbrake. The next volume we're going to map is just storage, and we're going to give this read-only access. And this can be mounted to anywhere on your server, but generally you would mount your video files here, the ones you want to convert. Next is a watch folder. So this is the folder it's going to watch to automatically convert some of our video files. Now, we want to give this read-write access because it needs to write to the actual folder path for the video conversion. And next is output, and we're going to give it read-write as well. And the output is the output of where it's going to place files after it's done converting them. And the last piece is just the Docker registry we're going to use. And that's jlessage slash handbrake. Now there are a couple more environment variables and settings we're going to configure, but we'll do that in Rancher. So if you're interested in those, 
just follow along to the rancher piece. So now we're going to convert that docker command to a workload in rancher. And it's really easy to do. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure we're on our default cluster. The next thing we're going to do is deploy a new workload. So we'll click deploy. Then once we're in our workload, we'll name it. We'll name this handbrake and we'll probably keep the default namespace. If you have different namespaces, feel free to put it there. Next, we need to do some port mapping. And the ports are right here. It's port 5800. So we'll name this port handbrake. We'll publish the port of 5800 on the inside. Then we'll choose host port and we'll choose 5800 on the outside. And this is going to expose 5800 now on your node. If you want to use a different port here or you want to use an ingress, feel free to choose that and set that up. If you have no idea what I'm talking about and you have a single node, just choose 5800 here. One thing we'll do real quick before I forget, because I always do, is let's change our scaling and upgrade policy since we're doing this on host port. So let's change the scaling and upgrade policy to kill all pods, then start new. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's a single node install and you can't have multiple services exposed on the same port. And I always forget to do that part. So I'm going to do it now instead of later. So anyways, you'll want to make sure that that's set. Next, we'll jump into volumes and we'll talk about environment variables here in a minute because there are some really important ones. But let's set our volumes first. And so for volumes, if we're running a single node, we're going to choose bind mount a directory from a node. And what this means is we're going to mount a directory from that server to this container. Now, if you're using persistent volume claims or some other storage classes, feel free to use that. But for this example, we're going to actually mount storage from the node to the container. So we'll need to do that a few times, but let's grab the first one. So the first volume we're going to create is config. And the path on the node is the path on the server. And this should end in handbrake slash config. Then the mount path in the container is slash config. We actually need to create that directory on the server. So let's do that real quick. So once you're in your server, you'll want to create a directory called handbrake. After you create that, you'll want to CD into that directory and then create one called config. Then you'll just want to make sure you have that directory. While we're here, we might as well create the other directories too. So we'll make one called storage. We'll make one called watch. Then we'll make one called output. And if we list our directories, we should see config, output, storage, and watch. Then you'll want to make note of the absolute path to that folder. For me, it's slash home slash server admin slash docker underscore volumes slash handbrake. And we'll need to copy that to the mount path within Rancher. The next path we're going to create is called storage. And the path on the node is mapped to the folder that we created. And that should end in handbrake slash storage. And the mount path to the container is slash storage. And if you recall from our Docker commands, this was the only one that was read only. So we'll want to make sure that this is checked, read only. The next volume we're going to create is watch. And this again maps to the node path, handbrake slash watch, to the containers path of slash watch. And then the last one we're going to create is output. And this again is going to map to the node path slash output, which should be handbrake slash output to the containers path of slash output. And now all of our volumes will be mapped. So let's talk about environment variables because there's a lot of cool ones here. A lot of them I discovered after I set it up the first time that I revisited. So glad I didn't make this video earlier. So there are lots of environment variables here and that's actually a good thing. Those are options for us to configure our Docker container the way we want. So for me, the more the merrier. But we're going to focus on a couple that I think are important that address security. The first one we're going to focus on is this secure connection. So when we set it to one, it'll actually secure a connection using SSL. And it's using a self-signed certificate, but that's better than nothing. And if you want, you can also put this behind a reverse proxy and use your own SSL, but we won't get into that. But we want to turn this on and set it to one. So back in Rancher, we'll add a variable called secure underscore connection, and we'll set the value to one. And this will turn on SSL. The next one, we don't need to look at the documentation, but it's our time zone. It's probably a good idea to set this. And this will be the time zone of your server. For me, it's America slash Chicago, but you'll want to set it to the time zone of your server and not necessarily the time zone that you live in. The next one we're going to set is VNC password. Now we didn't talk about VNC, but it's actually using VNC to connect to this process so you can actually remote into it and change your settings. But we'll want to turn this on. That is, of course, unless you want unauthenticated access to this container's web page. 
Now, you can do this in a couple of ways. You can do it through an environment variable, which we're going to do, or you can set that password in a file in the containers config folder and set it that way. And if you want to do it, you'll just click on this VNC password section and it talks about how to set it there in that config file. But we're going to set it in a Kubernetes variable. I highly recommend you set it in the file later on. But we're going to add a variable called VNC password and we're going to set our super secure password. And so after you set your password, one thing to keep in mind is that there is a limitation on this password length and it's eight characters. And they go into detail about why. But just know that it can't be more than eight characters, otherwise the other characters are going to be ignored and the password you try to use will not work. So keep it to eight characters. It can be any eight characters you want, but it can't be more than eight. But anyways, this looks pretty good. And the last variable we're going to set up, and we're going to do this ahead of time so we don't need to do it later, is our automatic conversion preset. So what this is, is a preset that it will use when it automatically batch converts any file from the watch folder. And you can always change this later, but I'd rather set it up now so that when we get to batch converting, you can see how it works. And I'm going to use this one called Discord Small 2 Minute 360p 30 frames per second. And it's in the web category. And so they have a convention for how you do this, and you'll see it in the UI later. But it's category slash preset name. So I'm using a preset from the web category and then slash discord small two minutes 360p 30 frames per second is the name of the preset. And you'll see that here in a minute. But after all this is done, we should be able to launch this pod. So let's launch it. And so now it's spinning up and now it's running. And now we should just be able to go out to port 5800 from our node and see handbrake. So one thing to take note is that you'll want to go to HTTPS and then the IP address of your node, and then the port 5800. And you can see that here. And you see we have a self-signed certificate. It is self-signed, but at least our communication is secured. And you can swap this out with your own certificate if you like later. But we can see too, we're greeted with a password. So now we should be able to type in our super secure password and get in. And here it is, handbrake in a web page. This is pretty awesome. And you can see we have all of the features of Handbrake. We can open a new source file, change some of the presets for conversion. We can even preview this file. And we can change the dimensions. We can apply some filters, change some of the video quality or the encoders or the frame rate or any of the settings you would normally see in Handbrake. We can adjust the audio too if we like. Add subtitles, chapters, tags, you name it. All the things you would normally see in Handbrake. But I bet you're wondering how I got this file, considering this is running in Docker and it's mounted files from my server. Well, I copied some files into the source directory. So that's one thing you'll have to do, is you'll either have to copy files into that source directory or you mount a network path that has the source files you want. And so that's what I did. I copied files into the source directory and now I can see them here. And so when I open source, we'll only be able to see files in that source folder, along with the other mounts we have too, but that shouldn't have any videos right now. So we can open this up and we can actually start a conversion right now. So if we want to do a fast conversion, 720p, 30 frames per second, choose the settings and we click start. And so this is actually encoding right now. And this is going to save to the output folder. And so this output folder is mapped on our Docker container. And if we remote into that server and run something like top, we can see that Handbrake, the top process, is actually crushing our CPU. Well, not crushing, but it's using a lot of CPU, which is exactly what you want when you convert a video. And you can tune this too. There are environment variables you can pass to this container, so it won't use as many resources. But for this demo, I'm letting it use all, so it can use all of the CPU that this node has. And so when this is done, it will drop it off in the output folder. And you might be thinking, okay, I can do this on my own machine. Why do I wanna do it on a remote server? Well, that's where batch conversion comes into play. If you recall, we set up a watch folder and that watch folder will watch for new files. When it sees new files, it will convert those files and place them in the output folder. And it will apply the preset that we mentioned earlier. And so that's the profile it's gonna apply when it batch converts anything from that watch folder. And if you want this to be something else, all you have to do is grab the category name slash the preset name. 
and apply that environment variable to your own pod. And so all we need to do to kick off the batch process is just copy a file into the watch folder. And that's what I did. And you can see here, it's actually automatically converting this file now. And it's applying the preset that we set ahead of time, the Discord one, the very small one. And it will do this for every single file within that watch folder and then put them in the output folder. And so you can start to see how powerful this is, especially if you want to integrate this into your workflow. And this may take some time depending on the resources that that server has, as well as the preset you selected. And after that's done, all we need to do is go to the output folder and check out that video. So let's see how it did. Okay, so I copied those files back locally so I can inspect them. This first is the original. It's one I did recently on object detection through my whole entire life. But this is the high quality version that I uploaded to YouTube. And if we look at the details, it's 1920 by 1080. You can see the bitrate is around 33,000 kilobits per second. It's at 60 frames per second. And the audio bitrate is at 317 kilobits per second. And the file size is almost 800 megabytes. But if we take a look at the version I converted with Handbrake, with that preset for Discord, just a generic preset, it looks pretty good. I mean, obviously it's not meant to go full screen, but it looks pretty good at this resolution. But where it gets really interesting is when we look at the details. And so if we look at the details of this file, this file is less than 12 megabytes. So this is tiny. We went from almost 800 to almost 12. And if we look at the details, it resized it, so it's 360p now. The bitrate is much lower, only 459 kilobits per second, and the audio is reduced too, 64 kilobits per second. But that's super impressive to be able to go from something like this to something like this and reduce the file size drastically. Now I get it, this wasn't because Docker, Rancher, Kubernetes, this was all done by Handbrake. But hopefully that gives you some ideas of how you can apply this. You could have this running within Docker, Portainer, Rancher, Kubernetes, wherever you want, in a Docker container, have this watch a folder, pick up those files, convert it, and drop them off wherever you want. Which is kind of what I'm looking for in my workflow, which led me down this path. And so, how do you think you'll use this? Will you use it for batch conversion? Or will you use it for just one-off conversions when you need? Are you going to add this to plain old Docker, Portainer, Rancher, Kubernetes? Or are you just going to continue to run it on your desktop? Either way, let me know in the comments section below. And while you're down there, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you have more questions, you can always join my live stream. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you have a question about this video or any of my videos, hop in and let's figure it out. So, thanks so much for watching and till next time. Stream on, my friends. So when I lived in Indiana, you have Michigan and Indiana, so they called it Michiana. And then you had Ohio and Indiana, you know, out to the east, and it was Ohioana. And then you had Kentucky and Indiana, and they called it Kentuckyana. Then you just had Illinois. And that, and they, for some reason, the border with Illinois just didn't get any love. Maybe they do, and I just never figured it out. Illinoisana, but I, I don't know. That doesn't sound right.